Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's Learn Canadian English live stream. My name's Ian Shepard, and I'm the owner of Right Start Newcomer Services. So first, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Hope you're all doing well on this Monday morning. Uh, today in Halifax, it's pretty foggy and kind of miserable, so maybe it's a good day to stay inside and learn some English. Okay, so before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that Right Start Newcomer Services conducts business in Chibuktuk, which is how you say Halifax in the Mi'kmaq language. This city is part of the ancestral unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This means that when settlers came, the indigenous people uh, did not surrender their territory and instead signed treaties with Europeans. As a business, we are committed to upholding these treaties as we continue to build relationships between settlers, newcomers, and Mi'kmaq people. Okay, great. So, like I said, I hope you're all doing well. Today's lesson is all about family. So, um, today we're going to get some practice talking about your family. You're going to hear a little bit about my family, and we're going to have a lot of fun and learn a lot of English. Okay, so we have a couple of viewers. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, please tell me uh, how to pronounce your name. So is it Jesus or Jesus? Because I, I, I feel bad, you know, if I, I'm screwing it up. So just let me know how to pronounce your first name, and I would be very appreciative. Uh, and good morning, Bay. How's it going in Brazil? So, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Anybody else who's joining us, say hello in the comments section. Okay, so it's okay, don't worry. I'm just gonna say Jesus, okay? Because that's the first thing that comes in my head. Um, so I hope that's right. And if it's not, I'm sorry, uh, what are you gonna do? Okay, um, so anybody else joining us, say hello. If you're watching the live stream afterwards, you can still comment, and I will get to all your comments and questions. Um, okay, thumbs up. Good, Jesus. All right, great. So, like I said, today's lesson is about family. We're going to practice uh, talking about family. Oh, uh, my wife says that my video is very pixelated. So that's not good. Uh, maybe it's an internet issue. Are you guys having that problem? You can't see me very well. There's not a whole lot I can do uh, at this point, but I'm really sorry if it's not clear and you can't see me very well. Uh, are you guys having this issue? You're not seeing me very clearly? Let me know. Um, I don't know if there's a lot I can do to change that right now. And Yulia says, hello. Yulia, Yulia, hi Yulia, uh, how's it going? And I apologize if my video is not very clear. So, I don't know, let me know if you're having trouble seeing me, hearing me, put it in the comment section because I'd like to know how I can improve this live stream. Okay, so let's get on with it. Um, so, like I said, talking about family, this lesson is best for CLB or Canadian Language Benchmark 3 or 4, although maybe if, even if you're higher, you will get some benefit from today's lesson. Uh, Yulia says, not clearly, but it's okay. Good. Uh, so, yeah, sorry about that. I'm, uh, I'm trying my best. Maybe, um, did that help anything? Ah, oh, whatever. We'll just go for it. Okay, thank you for your feedback, Yulia. So today we're going to play a little game, uh, practice some family vocabulary, work on a little grammar. So contractions. Okay. Also talk about Canadian culture a little bit. So what's family like here in Canada? We're going to do a listening activity. So I'm going to tell you about my family and you can ask some questions or answer some questions. And then finally, I want you guys to tell us a little bit about your family. So maybe you can tell us about one person in your family or your whole family. So that's the plan for today, and let's get going. So to begin with, we're going to play a little game. 
Uh, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so you can read. Um, so let's practice our family vocabulary. You can listen to and read the description and write the correct word in the comment section. Okay, so this will be good practice testing what we already know about family. So our vocabulary for this game, mother, I think you all know mother, father, sister, brother. So those are the common family members in our close or immediate family that we might talk about. After that, you have son and daughter. So your children, son or daughter, stepbrother. So we use the word step for stepbrother, stepsister, stepmother, stepfather. So who is your stepbrother? What does that mean? So who is your stepbrother in relation to you? Do you like my cup? Present from my wonderful wife. It's a, it's a cow. I don't know if you can see it because of the video quality, but looks like a cow, and then you got the, the stands down below. So who is your stepbrother? Is it your, how is it different from a regular brother? So this one right here, stepbrother, oops. So what is your stepbrother? Maybe you're shy. That's okay, it's Monday. So you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Maybe you don't know. So your stepbrother is your father or mother's son, but they are related to you through marriage, right? They're not your, they're not related by blood, right? They are your, maybe your parents got remarried and they brought their, their child into the relationship, they are not related to you by blood, but by marriage. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, the next one is mother-in-law. Again, not your real mother. Well, I mean, maybe she is considered your mother now, but not by blood, it's by marriage. So your husband or your wife's mother is your stepmother, sorry, your mother-in-law. Okay, next is cousin. So your cousin, who's your cousin? And in English, we only have one word for cousin. There's no separate word for male cousin or female cousin. We just say cousin. So who is your cousin? I'll just tell you, right? So your cousin is your mother's or your father's sister or brother's child. So your, for example, my mother's sister's daughter is my cousin. Hope that makes sense. Remember, you can always Google these. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, Google the definition, just put the word and then type definition, and then you'll get the explanation for that. Uh, okay, grandmother, I think we know grandmother. Great grandfather. So in English, we say, we don't say grand grandfather, we say great grandfather. So your father's grandfather or mother's grandfather is your great grandfather. Aunt, uncle, I think we know those. Nephew, niece. So my brother's children are my nephews and nieces. Husband, wife, and pet. So these are some good vocabulary words for describing your family and how they are related to you. So let's do our little game. So if you know the word, write it in the comment section. Okay, so we'll go through these pretty quickly. Answer whichever ones you know. If you don't want to answer, that's cool too. All right, no pressure. So number one, she's your mother's sister. 
What is her relationship to you? She's your mother's sister. Okay, number two. He's your father's son. So if you have the answer, put, put the number if you don't mind, uh, just so we know which, which question you're answering. And we do have one answer for number one. Bay got it. Very good, Bay. So aunt, some people in Canada say aunt. So it depends where you live in Canada. I'm from the eastern part of Canada. So I say aunt. When I went to university in the western part of Canada, they say aunt. So everybody made fun of me. Oh, you say aunt, you're so stupid. You're from the East Coast. So depending on where you live in Canada, it is pronounced aunt or aunt. Okay, great. All right, thank you, Bay. great answer. And number two, he's your father's son, possibly. Possibly your stepbrother, if he's not related by blood, instead related by marriage. Yeah, exactly. Stepbrother, or maybe just brother. Uh, we'll see that in a second. Very good, Bay. Number three, she's your father's mother. So who is your father's mother? Bay, exactly. So it could be your brother. Your father's son is your brother. Or it could be you, right? If you are your father's son, so maybe it's you as well. Uh, very good. Okay, keep going. Number four, he's the man you married. Who could that be? Uh, actually, I'm going to go through all of these. Type your answers in the comments section, and I will get to them as we go through them. Oh, okay. He's your mother's brother. Your mother's brother is your somebody. Uh, number six, she's your mother's sister's daughter. That's a little confusing. Mother's sister's daughter. How is she related to you? Uh, remember, if you can put the number that you're answering, because... Uh, we're just putting these in here, and I think we're going to get confused about which question you're answering. So if you're answering number three, just put three, and then your answer. So we'll be able to go over them. Number seven, he's your father's new wife's son. Okay, that's a little tricky. He's your father's new wife's son. Uh, number eight, she's your brother's daughter. Your brother's daughter is your what? And number nine, he's your father's father's father. Sounds a little funny, but your father's father's father. And last one, she's your husband's mother. Your husband's mother is your somebody. Okay, so I, I see a lot of answers. We'll try to go through them one by one and see who got them correct. So they already answered number one and number two. So let's look at number three. She's your father's mother is clearly your grandmother. Okay, they got that one. Uh, very good, Bay. Just put them together. Put those two words together. So grandmother is one word. Okay, awesome. And Jesus got a grandma. Good. Sometimes we say grandma instead of grandmother. Uh, grandmom sometimes. Sometimes we say nanny. I used to call my grandmother nanny, um, granny. There's a whole bunch of names we use for grandparents. Okay. Jesus, you got it. Bay, you got it. Great. Guillermo. Hey, Guillermo. How's it going? Cool picture. You look like the Terminator. Okay, cool. Uh, very good, Guillermo. You got it. Grandmother. So I think we're all set. Three is grandmother. Number four, he's the man you married. Uh, husband. Okay, so Yulia got it. Very good, Yulia. Bay got it. Um, what if you're not married anymore? You used to be married, and you're not married anymore. So you married them once but it didn't work out. 
So you are no longer married to that person. So it's not your husband anymore. What do we call a husband who is not your husband any longer? That's a tricky one. So you married them, didn't work out, you got divorced. So that husband is your, very good, Yulia, ex. So sometimes we just say ex, or we say ex-husband, ex-wife. So just ex. Ex means former, used to be married, but not any longer. Okay, very good, Yulia. So let's move on. Number five, I believe. He's, sorry, he's your mother's brother. So your mother's brother is your, did anybody get this one? Mother's brother, I think Jesus got it. So uncle, number five is uncle. He's your mother's brother. They got it too, very good. So mother's brother is your uncle. That is clear, awesome. Number six, she's your mother's sister's daughter. So think about that one. Your mother's sister's daughter is your, Jesus got it, your cousin, right? So like I said in English, we have just the same word for cousin. It doesn't matter if it's a male or female, but I know some other languages, they have different words for male or female cousins. Uh, great, uh, very good, Bay. just your spelling, C-O-U-S-I-N, and that is your cousin. Okay, very good. Let's move on. Number seven, he's your father's new wife's son, so that is your stepbrother. Bay got it again. Okay, I think you're almost perfect, Bay. Great. Um, so, your father's new wife's son is your stepbrother. Very good. And number eight, she's your brother's daughter. Brother's daughter is your, Bay again, niece. Very good. You got it. Great. Um, great. So that was eight. Number nine, he's your father's father's father is your great grandfather. Excellent. You got it again. And finally, She's your husband's mother. Your husband's mother is your... I don't see anybody with this one. Your husband's mother is your mother... Nobody got it. I think I have the answers here. Your mother-in-law. So not your mother... By blood, she's your mother in law. Jesus got it, very good. Guillermo got it, very good. And Bay got it, very good, you guys. So, great, it is good to know these words. So, especially in English, if you're describing your family to somebody, know the names of all of those family members. Uh, I also wanna draw your attention to this. So, this is called a possessive. So we want to say who or what is the relationship between you. So, for example, you could say my mother's sister, my friend's mother, my sister's friend, something like that. So you would use what's called the, what's that little thing? So this thing, this thing, this thing, it's all over the place here. What do we call that thing? It's a punctuation mark called, there's another one, look at that. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one, there's another one. What do we call that punctuation mark? Because we're gonna be talking about it in a second. It's not a period, it's not a comma, it's not a question mark, it's not an exclamation mark. It is called an, what's it called? Don't know? 
That's okay. That's why we're here to learn, right? It is called, oh, you're so close. Javier, okay. Close apostrophe. Uh, you just have a little spelling mistake there. I'm going to write it here for you, although it does come up in the next slide. Right, so it is called an apostrophe, apostrophe in English. And we use it to show possession, right? So apostrophe S shows who something belongs to or the relationship between two people. Okay, great. Yes, very good, Bay. it is an apostrophe. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about apostrophes in one second because today's grammar topic is contractions. And when we're you know, talking about people, when we're speaking in English, even when we're writing, we use contractions all the time. So basically contractions are shortened forms of words that have letters removed. So in English, we're kind of lazy. So we want to do it the short way if possible. Maybe all languages are like that. We, we want to say things as fast as possible, as easily as possible. So we like to shorten things into the simplest form. So contractions are those shortened forms of words. They have letters removed. They're used a lot in spoken English, but also written. We do write a lot with contractions. Uh, the contractions use an apostrophe. So we just learned that word to mark where the letters are removed. So when you're making a contraction, you write and then you put the apostrophe where the letters are missing and then you finish spelling the contraction. So what contractions can you think of? So I have a list. Um, contractions, again, are those shortened forms of words. For example, I'm, right? I'm a teacher. Probably I would say it that way instead of I am a teacher. So I'm is a contraction. So put it in the comment section. How many contractions can you think of before I share my list with you? I'm, he's, we're, can't, it's, okay, great, Bay. So it's stands for it is, right? So it's a rainy day today. Um, it's nice outside. You can also use it's to talk about animals, like if you have pets. So it's a cat, you know, maybe I would say he or she. If I know the, the sex and gender of my cat, um, I would say she's, she's my cat when I know, but if I don't know, I'd say, oh, it's a nice cat because I, I didn't check carefully to see is it male or female. All right, some more, Bay gave us some more. So he's, she's, we're, very good. Those are all excellent examples of contractions. Couldn't as well. So that is awesome. So we know quite a few contractions. Here are some more. So usually we use them with the be verb. So listen to my pronunciation. If you want to practice your pronunciation, you can repeat after me. Okay, so I'm, he's, she's, it's, your, we're, there, isn't, aren't, wasn't, and weren't, weren't. Okay, so you with the be verb, we use contractions a lot. Okay, and we got a couple more. Don't, very good, Bay. Guillermo, I've, couldn't, very good. There's a whole bunch and we'll just list a few more. Often we use contractions with do, right? With the verb do, so don't, doesn't, or didn't. And again, if you want to repeat after me, practice your pronunciation, feel free to do so. 
Unfortunately, I can't hear what you say. Also with the verb have. So instead of I have, we'd say I've, I've, he's, she's, it's, haven't, hasn't. Or in the past, you could say hadn't. Notice, this is a little bit crazy. Check this. He's and he's. She's and she's. It's and it's. It's the same spelling, but it's a different word, right? So in the top line, he's means he is. But down here, oopsie doopsies. Oh, damn it. Okay, that's where we were. So on the top line, it's he is. But down here, it's he has. Up here, it's she is. Down here, it's she has. Up here, it's it is. And down here is it has. So how do we know? You know, if it's spelled he's, H-E apostrophe S, how do we know it's he is and how do we know it's he has? Because it's pronounced the same, it's written the same, but they are different. Oh my goodness, that is a good answer. So context, very good. We have to guess from the sentence or from the conversation. So if I say, he's, he's a good man, am I saying the first one or the second one? He's a good man. I'm saying the first one because it means he is a good man instead of he has a good man. Usually we'd only use that contraction he's for he has in the present perfect, right? So he's been away for many years, okay? He's been away. So in that case, it's he has been, not he is been. So Bay is exactly right. You have to use context to know which one, which of these contractions you're talking about. And that was a great answer, Bay. Okay, I'm just gonna slowly but surely erase this. Okay, and we'll move on to modals. Okay, modals are those sort of helping verbs like can, can't, uh, will, would, those types of things. But we use them a lot, especially for the negatives. So can't, won't, shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, I'd, he'd, I'll, she'll, and they'll. Okay, so those are those ones are a little bit tricky to pronounce, especially at the end there, so I'll say them again. Can't, won't, not want, won't, shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, I'd, not id, I'd, he'd, I'll, she'll, they'll. There you go. And there are some others. These are kind of like contractions because they're shortened forms. You might also call them slang. So, gonna, gotta, gimme, kinda, and wanna. So these are used mainly in spoken language, right? I'm gonna go get some groceries today. I gotta go visit my parents soon. Uh, please give me some cheese. I kinda have to go to the bathroom. I wanna make a lot of money and get rich. So those last five, how would you write them the long way? So I wrote them the short way. How would you write them the long version? So what's gonna? What's gotta? 
what's gimme, what's kinda, and what's wanna. Okay, I'll give you a second for that. Boy, it is a rainy day out there. Okay, so give me instead of gimme. Very good. Give me, gimme, kinda is kind of. Very good, Bay. Uh, want to is wanna. Very good. So I think you got most of them. Gonna is going to. Very good, Javier. This is great. And I think we got most of them. So going to is gonna. Got to is gotta. Give me is gimme. Kinda is kind of. And wanna is want to. So we use these a lot. So practice your contractions, practice making sentences with them, practice writing with them, practice spelling them, practice saying them because they are a little bit tricky to pronounce. So you can review this lesson afterwards and work on that pronunciation, okay? Awesome. Let's move ahead. Let's talk a little bit about Canadian culture as it relates to family. So, as in every country, family is extremely important to Canadians. Uh, in Canada, you have a lot of freedom to, to love, live with, marry whomever you choose. I mean, there are some rules that you're not allowed to marry, say, your sister or your mother. That's called incest, and we don't do that here. Um, and there are also rules about age, right? You're not allowed to marry somebody below age, I think, 16 in Canada. But generally, you're allowed to love, marry, whomever you choose, which, uh, which is really great. Uh, and also in Canada... Sorry. My wife says it's dead air. So... Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Maybe she's having internet problems. I don't know. Can you guys hear me? Is it dead air? Am I talking? They can hear me. Okay, great. Maybe her, her internet is messed up. Maybe it's not mine. So I don't know. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, here we go. So, like I said, gay marriage is legal and accepted. You are allowed, say, for two men to marry, two women to marry. They can adopt children. They can have children. And this has been, you know, accepted in Canada for, you know, maybe 15 or 20 years. So Canada was one of the first countries to allow gay, lesbian marriage and I'm very proud of that. And most, almost all Canadians accept that and support that. So that's one of the things that makes me very happy to be a Canadian. Uh, and finally, pets. Pets are considered to be part of the family. So dogs, cats, fish, snakes, spiders, whatever. Keep that in mind because when you're talking about somebody's animals, that person considers them to be part of the family. So they don't want to hear you say, oh, I hate your dog or keep your stinky cat away from me, right? You have to be polite to that person's family members, including their pets. Uh, it's okay to say, you know, I, I, I'm afraid of dogs or I'm not a big fan of cats, but don't say your cat is stupid, your dog is ugly, I hate your fish, whatever. So keep that in mind. Uh, Bay, I think you're applauding the gay marriage. Yes, uh, I'm very happy about that too. So it is a wonderful thing. Okay. Whoa, what happened here? That was weird. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to practice a little bit. So, sorry. This is acting very strangely. Okay, so we're gonna do a little practice. Oh, Rodrigo's late. 
I guess it's okay, Rodrigo. Uh, I'm not super angry. I'm not going to tell your parents you were late for class. Maybe I'll give you a little extra homework, okay? But uh, thank you for apologizing, Rodrigo. It is perfectly fine. So for this activity, I'm just going to talk about my family a little bit. So I've got a couple pictures that I want to share. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the people in this picture, and then I'll explain who the people are in the next picture. So this is my family. So starting on the far left is my father. Uh, his name is John, John Shepard. Um, he was a teacher. He's a really nice guy. He, he likes to work outside. He likes to take his electric bike for a ride. And his hobbies are watching sports on TV and complaining. Okay, uh, the next guy over, that's me. I was a little bit chunkier in those days, but uh, I had a little bit more hair too. So, but that I assure you is me. This picture is from maybe a couple years ago. Uh, next, who do you think that is? Who is the guy next to me? So, this guy. Is he my grandfather? Is it my stepsister? He'd probably kill me if, I, if he heard me say that. Bay is right, he's my brother. Exactly right, so that's my brother Tim. He's an engineer in Ontario. He's a little bit shorter than me and he's three years older. Uh, he likes to work, he likes to spend time with his family. He just bought a cottage, so they like to spend time there, uh, kayaking. Um, he's a nice guy. He, what else can I say about him? Yeah, he is my brother. So Guillermo, you're right, he's my brother. He is definitely my brother. Yes, he's my older brother, Tim, and we grew up together. Uh, I don't see him too much, unfortunately, because Tim and his family live in Ontario, and I'm in Nova Scotia, and it's a, it's a pretty long drive, and now with COVID, we're not allowed to travel to see each other. So I haven't seen him in a couple of years. Okay, and next to my brother is this young man. He is my brother's son, Luke. So he is my nephew. Uh, he's about 15 years old, I think. Uh, he's really smart, so he's in a gifted class. He likes to chase girls. He likes to play soccer. Um, he actually is a, an entrepreneur. He, he makes some money by making apps and sells them, and he's a smart little guy. And Bay, you're right, he is my nephew. What about this lady here? Who could that lovely lady be? That is my mom. So that's my mother, Colleen. She's super funny. She's very kind. She's an excellent cook and baker. Uh, she's, yeah, she's got a great sense of humor. She likes to travel, she likes to spend time outside in the garden, and she's very social. She likes to hang out with her friends and go out to dinner and do a lot of fun things. It's kind of funny because my dad likes to stay home and my mom likes to go out and make friends. So he's kind of a homebody, she's a social butterfly, and they make a wonderful couple, although they do fight all the time. Okay, couple more. This young lady is my brother's daughter. That is my niece, Kate. She's very sweet and cute. Uh, she's very popular. She has lots of friends. She likes to play on her iPad. Uh, she was in gymnastics, but I don't think she does that anymore. And she also lives in Ontario. She loves the water. She likes to spend time swimming in the pool. Uh, I don't know, she's pretty young. I don't know if she's into boys and stuff like that. Uh, I hope not. Let her wait until she's 20 to start thinking about boys. 
Uh, okay, just a couple more. So, who is this? This is my brother's wife. So, how is she related to me? My brother's wife is my... And her name is Angie. She is my sister in law. She is my sister in law. So, not my sister from birth. She is my brother's wife. She is my sister in law. Very good. Uh, Castellanos. Castellanos, is that right? Sister in law. Good. But law, L A W. L A W. So, sister in law. Very good. So that's correct, Bay. You're very close. Um, can I call you Martha? Maybe Martha is a bit easier. So sister-in-law is correct. L-A-W. Very good, Martha. Um, so this is my sister-in-law, Angie. She's a nurse. Uh, she's very busy these days taking care of their children. Um, she likes to cook. She likes to go for walks with the kids and take them to the playground. Uh, she likes to hang out with her friends, and she's a very good mom to their children. And then finally, this little guy, this little monkey, is my nephew. So they have two sons and a daughter. This is my nephew, Zach. He's a little monster. He's got a lot of energy. He also loves the water, so he likes to kayak and swim. They have a pool. They have a lake at their cottage. Um, as you can tell, they probably are richer than me uh, because I don't have a, a kayak and a cottage, but, you know, he, he works hard for his money. So I don't, uh, I'm not jealous of them. So basically that is my family. I want to show you one more picture with my beautiful wife, Michelle, and our lovely cat, Gracie. So this is our immediate family or close family. So, my wife, Michelle, works for the government of Canada. She's very funny. She's very hardworking. Uh, we love to spend time together, you know, watching TV, going for walks, going on our scooters. We like to scoot together. She loves swimming more than anybody I know, and she loves to spend time in nature. And she's a very good mother to our daughter, Gracie. Well, we call her our daughter, but she is our cat. Uh, so that's my wife, Michelle. As you can tell, she's a couple years younger than me. Um, and she's very wonderful. Okay, our cat, Gracie. So this is our old cat, Gracie. She's 17 years old. She's such a wonderful kitty. She's very sweet. She's funny. She's friendly. She's the best cat in the world. So that is my family. So my wife, my cat, my parents, my brother, his family, that is my family. So for you guys, I'd like you to tell me a little bit about your family. So you can choose one person. Uh, you can just say a little bit about all the members of your family, but I would love to say, or sorry, I would love to hear about your family. So in the comment section, Choose someone in your family. Tell us about them. I would love to hear about it. Uh, Rodrigo says, is it okay to say partner instead of wife? Yeah, it is, right? So some people say partner when they mean wife or husband. Partner could mean boyfriend, girlfriend. Could mean common law. Maybe we didn't cover that word, common law partner. So common law partner means somebody that you live with in a romantic relationship for a period of time. Um, by law, it needs to be more than six months, but you know, you can say partner. Sorry, uh, Rodrigo, you have a spelling error there. So partner. So you can say partner instead of wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, doesn't really matter. Um, and it, some people choose to say it, right? Possibly, you know, a gay or lesbian person might use the term partner. Maybe they're not comfortable saying my 
my wife or my husband because they might not know you very well and they might use the term partner instead, but it is used by anybody. So that was a good question, Rodrigo. Any other questions uh, you can think of about what you would call somebody in your family? Just put that in the comment section. So I would like to hear something about your family. So that will be our last activity today. Write a sentence or two describing somebody in your family. So your wife, husband, partner, parent, grandparent. Unfortunately, my grandparents have died. Uh, so it's, it's just my parents and, you know, I do have uncles, aunts, cousins and all that stuff. So give me a sentence. Tell me about somebody in your family. I'd love to hear it. And also we'll check your spelling and grammar before we go home. Okay, so I'll wait a second, give you a chance to answer and drink my delicious tea. Mmm, yum. I have to say that it's pretty cool that I can, you know, teach people from all over the world. We can get together, we can chat, we can ask questions. Uh, I'm just very excited. This is such a cool thing. So anybody want to tell us about your family? Practice your writing a little bit, share something about yourselves. What would you like to say? I feel like I shared a lot, so you can share a little bit about yourselves. Okay, very good. So Bay says we are a neurodivergent family with autistic and gifted people. Okay, excellent. Um, I have three kids. They're very fun, smart, and kind guys. My husband is very handsome, haha, and fun and caring. We have two cute dogs as part of our family. Most of us are very, very introvert. Very good. So let's say introverted. So ED at the end, introverted. Introverted means maybe shy or quiet. And maybe you don't like to go out and party and listen to loud music. Instead, you prefer to stay home with your family. So very excellent description of your family, Bay. Thank you so much for, for sharing. That is great. OK, wonderful. Rodrigo. Hey, Rodrigo. So Rodrigo says, my grandmother is still alive. She's around 90 years old and she lives in Norway. Oh, cool. But that's pretty far from you, Rodrigo. So hopefully you get a chance to visit your grandmother in Norway or she's able to come visit you in Chile, although that's a very long flight for a 90 year old to take. But that is awesome. Thank you for sharing, Rodrigo. I can't find anything to fix in your sentence. So your sentences were perfect, Rodrigo. So you were late today, but your sentences were perfect. So I forgive you. Okay, Javier. So Brenda, it's my wife's name. Let's say Brenda is my wife's name, period. She is a wonderful mother. I'm sure she is, Javier. Um, so wonderful, one L. Wonderful. That is an awesome thing to say about your wife. So I'm sure she is an amazing wife and an amazing mother. So thank you for sharing, Javier. Uh, you're welcome, Bay. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else want to write a sentence or two about your family? Because we're going to sign off in a minute. It is time to go do whatever we're going to do for the rest of the day. Okay, so uh, Martha, I have a son. Very good. He lives in Halifax. He works for the city. That is great, Martha. So let's just use the period. So I have a son, period, instead of comma. And then we need a capital H. He lives in Halifax, period. He works for the city, period. Excellent. So Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing. And thank you to your son for working for the city. 
for keeping our great city of Halifax going. Um, I'm sure he's a very hard, dedicated worker. So that is awesome. Thank you so much, Martha. So I don't see any more comments. Uh, nobody else telling us about their family. So I think that's pretty much it for today. Um, so just to review, we warmed up, we learned the different family members, we learned some vocabulary, we learned about contractions. So remember, contractions are the shortened form of two words usually put together. Uh, we learned about Canadian culture a little bit. We did a listening activity. You heard about my family. And then you told us about your family. Um, so Amartha says, yes, he is. Thanks. You're welcome, Martha. Thank you for sharing about your son. So basically, that's it. Uh, again, our business is called Right Start Newcomer Services. Check out our website, www.rightstartcanada.ca, and email if you want. So info at rightstartcanada.ca. Uh, another thing you can do, you can share this with your friends if you think they would like to learn English. Feel free to share it, our Facebook or our YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Those are other ways that you can help us. But thank you so much for coming. I want to thank you guys and anybody watching the replay. And you're very welcome, Bay. Thank you so much for coming and participating. And thank you too, Rodrigo. Uh, you're very welcome. I'll see you on Thursday. So Thursday, we're going to have a really fun lesson, how to throw a birthday party. So we're going to learn some good words. We're going to have a lot of fun and maybe even eat some cake. Well, I'll eat cake. Maybe you guys can have cake at home too. Uh, but I will see you on Thursday at 11 Halifax time. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.